the fixture list is ready and Enzo Maresca is faced is supposed to face Pep Guardiola in his first Premier League game a very difficult game for Maresca but that is not the topic of discussion today as we'll be focusing more on Chelsea's summer transfer window our main aim is to try and look at the key additions that Moresca needs in his team to enable his team to be ready for the new season. We're going to look at uh, which players will fit in in his tactical philosophy and why Enzo Moresca needs to be backed by the board. Analyze these signings. And we are also going to tactically analyze each of those players and understand why Chelsea needs them. Chelsea this summer window has been linked with very many players. Julian Alvarez, Tosin, Duran, Michael Olise, and many more players. In this video, we are going to try and look at which departments do Chelsea need to strengthen and which players do they need to sign. We are also going to look at players who missed majority of last season, such as Slavia and Christopher Nkunku, and how they can actually be potential new signings for Chelsea this coming season. Before we even begin our analysis, check our previous videos, like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So the first signing that Chelsea should have made and have actually made is at the centre-back position. So upon the departure of Thiago Silva from the club, Chelsea had to bolster this position and actually managed to do this by bringing in Tosin and Rabiot. So, we know very well the way Chelsea wants to play and one centre-back is usually a passer of the ball or a centre-back who's much more aggressive looking to step out with the ball and look to carry the ball forward. And that is something that Tosin and Rabiot will do very well for Chelsea. He's a right-footed centre-back. You know, Chelsea uh, require right-footed centre-back, especially down the right. And this is because of the shaky position of Isasi and the unavailability of Wesley Fofana. So Tosin comes in to give him that leadership and that experience in that backline. And he's also a centre-back who's not afraid to carry the ball in field and look to progress the ball to attackers and midfielders higher up the pitch. Now, Tosin in this position is actually a new signing for Chelsea. And this is one signing that Chelsea really, really needed to do. Now, Tosin needs to be uh, excellently coached by Maresca to know when to step out. And he needs to be very composed and a great leader at the back. Able to sit in and help Chelsea progress the ball from the back. Maresca's system requires a centre-back who's astute, who's able to read the game, who's able to cut passing lanes, and who's aerially dominant. His first assignment will be to deal with the likes of Erling Haaland in the opening fixture of the season. And therefore, Chelsea need a centre-back who can do at least half of what Thiago Silva used to do for Chelsea. This is a very huge call for Tosin, but being the new signing that Chelsea have actually made in that position, he needs to look to solidify that position from the likes of Axel Disasi and Wesley Fofana. With rumors going about, about the departure of Trevor Chaloba from the club, this further emphasizes why this signing was very, very crucial for Chelsea as Chelsea are trying to ensure that they get the best of the best in the market and actually manage to back this manager, especially looking at Chelsea's horrible defensive record last season. The defensive record last season can also be an indication of the poor uh, centre-backs that Chelsea had and hopefully Tosin Adarabio is able to improve that situation at Chelsea. The second position that Chelsea desperately need to improve is the goalkeeping position. Yes, the goalkeeping position. So, the goalkeeping position, we know very well that Maresca wants a goalkeeper who's very, very good with the ball at his feet. A goalkeeper who's not afraid to play from the back, and very composed under pressure. And this leaves Chelsea uh, with a goalkeeper who should be able to find the two centre-backs during build-up. The goalkeeper should also be quite good in looking to find the fullbacks when the centre-backs are quite occupied. 
and the goalkeeper should also know when to actually join the back line to form a back four so that he can give Chelsea an extra passing outlet from the back. And that is why Chelsea need to go and sign a goalkeeper because the available options that Chelsea have have goalkeepers who are not quite great at doing that. Petrovic, Sanchez and Kepa Rizabalaga are not qu quite fancied ball playing centre backs at Chelsea. And therefore Chelsea need to improve this position by actually looking to bring someone in. Petrovic has been a, a good shot stopper, though in the last uh, games of the season he got overwhelmed. He's not quite a good uh, claimer of crosses, he's very good at penalties by the way. And therefore for Petrovic to retain the position that he had actually taken last season, he needs to know how to step out with the ball, be very well composed with the ball and look to try as much as possible to be very confident playing from the back. And because he'll, they'll be facing their hardest tests in the beginning of the campaign, Sanchez, who has also been injured this season, will be looking to come back, looking to come back and try to re-establish his position as the number one goalkeeper at Chelsea. And because of this situation, Sanchez should also come in and look to try and showcase why he should be uh, preferred to play from the back. Remember, Sanchez was uh, good playing from the back, but sometimes he's, he's very shaky, he's very clumsy. And that's why Chelsea are actually going back to the market to try and look for a goalkeeper. And a player such as Bulka has been rumored to be the player who Chelsea wants to go to come and bring into this system. So Chelsea need to actually sort out that position. The next position is the defensive midfielder. I know a lot of people will be like, uh, what about Kaysedo? What about Enzo? But uh, the player who fits the CDM position that Maresca wants to employ at Chelsea is none other than Romeo Lavia. So Lavia gives Chelsea... Uh, what we call an astuteness in that holding midfield position, something that uh, Kaisedo cannot give. He's very good at recovery and is much more settled playing in this deeper position. <laughs> Kaisedo, as we saw last season, was very good at tackling, was very good at covering spaces, he was very good at pressing. But uh, looking at how Maresca wants to deploy Chelsea next season, it looks like uh, Kaisedo will be a player who is much more fit into that number 8 10 hybrid role because his tackling ability and his ability to actually make those counter pressing tackles will be good for Chelsea higher up the pitch, not deeper in the pitch. And therefore, having a player such as Lavia coming in is actually like a new signing to bolster that Chelsea midfield. And this will leave a lot of questions for Maresca. Another thing that you need to note about uh, Lavia is that Lavia is very astute when it comes to defending. He has excellent recovery runs. He's press resistant at the back. He knows how to generate angles. He knows how to make line breaking passes. He knows how to link up the defense with the attack. So Lavia coming in is an upgrade on both Enzo and Caicedo in that holding midfield position because Lavia knows to play as the sole sitter. Something that Enzo can play, but Enzo is not a good progressor of the ball. The third position is the right wing position. So a lot of people are asking, why am I insisting on the right wing position? So you see the right wing position, uh, Chelsea are linked to the, with Michael Olise, who I believe Chelsea should ensure they have signed this player. This is a player that you're not going to find in the market cheaply. These are players that don't come quite easily in the world of football. And when Chelsea are in a position whereby they can get a, a player like that, it's a player that Chelsea should be really looking to try and sign. So, what does uh, Olise actually bring to Chelsea? What you're going to notice with Olise, it brings flair, technicality, movement, and predictability in Chelsea's attack. First of all, he's a good 1v1 dribbler. He's able to beat his fullback. Now, imagine having Olise in his form in this right-wing position. He also brings out the best of Noni Madueke because now Noni Madueke has to improve his game. Olise is able to carve in crosses from this position. And this withdraws 
a lot of creative burden from Cole Palmer. And therefore, if Cole Palmer is marked out of the game, then you have Olise who's able to step in and actually look to relieve Cole Palmer. He's also quite fast and can look to be making runs in beyond to receive the ball in these kinds of position. And once he's in this kind of position, Michael Olise is also quite good at making direct runs. He knows when to drop deep to give the fullback uh, an option and can look to play quick one-twos with the holding midfielder and look to receive the ball as a third man. Now, Michael Olise is a player who's very intelligent. And imagine having this player added to Chelsea's attack gives Chelsea's right-hand side a lot of dynamism and a lot of questions on why this is actually going to bring a lot of problems for other teams that are trying to, to try and uh, contain Chelsea. And because of Olise's pro-efficiency in this position, Noni Madweke will have to improve his game. And therefore, this will actually open up Chelsea's right-hand flank to make it more dangerous and deadly. His link-up play with Rhys James and Cole Palmer will also be quite effective in ensuring that Chelsea are able to effectively dominate teams with the counter or in possession. Now, we look at another position higher up the pitch. Now, last season Chelsea really had a problem in the center forward position. A position that Chelsea had only two player, three players playing at, and that is uh, Amanda Broja, Nicholas Jackson, and Christopher Nkunku. So Nkunku, who did not play with Chelsea last season, can play this season as a new signing because he did not have consistency last season. I believe the training methods that Pochettino employed did not play uh, uh, well with Nkunku. Nkunku now can play really well. He can play really well with the players around him. And we remember how last season Jackson was very wasteful in front of goal. Jackson, majority of the times, failed to actually put Chelsea ahead and actually put Chelsea in a position where Chelsea can actually take leads in games. The number of missed chances that Jackson had last season costed Chelsea not only caps, but also points in the league. And therefore, the center forward position is a very crucial position for Enzo Maresca if he wants to actually go and challenge with the very best in the Premier League. The board needs to actually finalize either the signing of Turan or Julian Alvarez to ensure that Chelsea are able to get the best. So what type of striker does Maresca want? So Maresca's striker should be a striker who is able to hold the line and actually play on the shoulder of the last defender, looking to actually drop, make the opposition defense line to drop deeper and deeper and deeper. Should be clinical on, uh, in front of goal, especially when the team plays a direct through ball for him. He should not be afraid to drop deep sometimes to play as a false nine, ready to receive the ball and link up with the three midfielders in midfield. And in this kind of situation, he will create spaces where the other midfielders can look to make runs beyond him. He can also be used as a target man to hold the ball and also use his strength to flick the ball onto the other side. Should be ready to actually move into the six yard box and look to attack the, uh, the spaces in front of the goalkeeper and actually be in a position where he's able to score tap-ins and open up spaces for the other midfielders. He should be the first defender leading from the front in the press. Is a leader because he's able to actually take the burden of leading the press from the front. And because Jackson facilitates all the defensive and the non goals duties, Chelsea need a prolific goal scorer. A player who's not afraid to shoot from range. And I've actually done an in depth analysis on Duran. A player like Duran gives Chelsea pace physicality, tenacity, and short power in that attacking lineup. He's a player who's not afraid to actually make those shots on target. Remember, you need to make a lot of shots on target to try and test the goalkeeper. And your shots need to be so, so powerful 
so powerful that you actually ensure that you 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 you, you test the goalkeepers more because you can either pounce on to a mistake or the goalkeeper can even fail to see your shots and this is what makes duran so good for chelsea duran or julian alvarez whoever will be signed should be quite prolific in this kind of situation and look to impose themselves in the game the next position is the left back yes so the left back position is quite tricky because uh, I believe that uh, Mark Kurela actually was part of the success for Mauricio Pochettino's last six games in charge at Chelsea. However, Chelsea need a much more a better left back because uh, sometimes Kurela has been caught out defensively. But sometimes you've also seen that uh, not only has Kurela been caught out defensively. Sometimes even when Ben Chilwell comes in, he will not be able to fulfill that role that Mareska wants him to do. First of all, Mareska wants Ben Chilwell to be very good in, in, an, in an inverted position. Chilwell is not comfortable with the ball at his feet. That is going to be problematic. Another thing is that Kukurela's defensive, uh, especially when he sleeps at the back post where Chelsea are actually receiving the cross from the far side, <laughs> makes him so susceptible. Uh, makes Chelsea susceptible to concede from those far post regions. However, Kurela is not quite bad. He's very good at playing this inverted uh, fullback position. He's very good at the counter press. He's very good at winning the ball in these kinds of situations and actually look to launch attacks for Chelsea. Now, Enzo Maresca will really need the support of the board, of the Chelsea board, to try and get Chelsea to the position where Chelsea need to be. This position is Chelsea's position to actually get back to the Champions League, look to challenge four Premier League titles and Champions League titles. The summer transfer window will dictate this and the players he actually brings in. So, do you think Chelsea will be able to pull off these signings? If so, leave your comments in the comment section area below. And if you have any other player that you think Chelsea should sign, you can leave your comments in the comment section area below. If you've watched this video till the end, thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.